us you've got you got New England pride show us you've got New England pride stand up shout out show us you got New England pride show us you've got New England pride New England Pride. Hi, I'm Dale LePage. And I'm Tina Marie Billing. Welcome, Welcome to, to New, New England, England Pride, Pride TV. This is our first show in 2019. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Happy New Year, everyone. Happy New Year, everyone. Now, Every New Year's Eve, I make um, like a New Year's resolution. Do you do you believe in those? Do you do you do yeah, those? Yeah, I you... do. I do. I think people should make a goal and work towards it. So yeah, I do. I believe that too, and I feel the same way. However, when I do a New Year's resolution, it lasts for about <laughs> 28 days, but I'm good for 28 days. But I just never follow through. All right. We're gonna start off uh, this episode with Pride Pets. On this episode, we introduce you to Big Hair Animal Rescue. Big Hair Animal Rescue is a volunteer-run rescue located in Sturbridge, Massachusetts. They are foster-based and have foster homes for cats and dogs up and down the northeast coast from Maine to New Jersey. Every day, thousands of adoptable shelter pets are euthanized in the United States. Big Hair Animal Rescue is committed to helping one shelter pet at a time and placing them in a loving home. Contact Big Hair Animal Rescue at 139 Fairview Park Road, Sturbridge. You can reach them also at BigHairAnimalRescue at gmail.com. <laughs> Donations and volunteers are always welcome. New England Pride TV is presented by Fallon Health and sponsored by the Hanover Theater for the Performing Arts, Remax Vision, Bay State Savings Bank, Safe Homes, Joseph Gonzalez Dofre, Boston Wedding Photographer, Paul Chase and Interior Design, Nuovo Restaurant, Dr. Frank P. Fetchner Plastic Surgery, The Queen's Cups, Escape Games Worcester, Art Reach, Electric Haze, Bull Mansion, Ellie's Pet Barn, Hand Me Taekwondo Center, and Heard. Strategy and Storytelling. Hey kids, I am so excited right now because with me on New England Pride TV stage is Alex Spearman, Mr. Boston Bear 2019. Welcome! Thanks oh my God, I'm so here. excited. It's awesome to be here. I've been actually uh, corresponding with um, Boston Bears, Boston Bears and Cubs. Mass right? Bears and Cubs. Mass Bears and Cubs uh, for Ooh, eight months or so, uh, trying to get somebody on this show, and we got you, and I'm so happy. Yeah, I'm glad we could do it. Yes. So, first of all, um, what is um, Mr. Boston Bear 2019? Okay, so every year, Mass Bears and Cubs, the sponsor organization, which is, uh, I guess, basically the uh, the bear group for yep. the greater Boston area, puts on the Ma Mr. Boston Bear slash Mr. Boston Cub contest every year. Um, it's, uh, you know, just a fun event to have for the community. Um, it's kind of just part of that great tradition of, like, the contest and, and with, within the queer community and here in Boston. And um, they basically become the representative for Mass Bears and Cubs and, like, the ambassador. Now, like, is know. there like, first, second, and third? Is there different categories? Yeah, there's a runner-up. Um, okay. um, and it, there's a runner-up in, the, like, a Mr. Congeniality. They call it Brother Bear. I was oh, um, nice. lucky enough to win Brother Bear. That's and really sweet. <laughs> <laughs> you won Brother Bear. Okay. I was able to, yeah, it was, yeah. It, which is picked by the contestants themselves. So that, oh, was, that was just awesome that, to come yeah. from them. It was a really great That's actually, like, saying, like, you're extra sweet and nice, <laughs> right? There's none of that backstage. No, no, yeah. no. We were, it, was, it, was, it was one of the more fun experiences I've ever had. I've never done anything like this before. So getting into it was pretty exciting. Now, who's the head of Mass um, Bears and Cubs? Sean Mims is our president. Sean Mims? Yes. Okay, Sean Mims. I'm looking right in this camera. Sean Mims, I want to be a judge next year. This sounds like so much fun. I am so happy. Um, so, what are the duties of Mr. Boston Bear? Uh, to basically be, you know, a good ambassador for, for Mass Bears and Cubs, for the community as a whole, to be out there, to, to represent the group. Um, each um, winner gets their own signature event okay. that year. Um, now, in other uh, contests, sometimes the winners will be asked to do like fundraisers for the cause. Is that mm -hmm. kind of the same thing? Yeah, we'll take okay. part in, um, I, one of our things that'll be coming up, we'll hear about more towards Thanksgiving is our toy drive. 
Um, okay. And then you'll, you'll obviously be a part of that. You'll yep. be a part of like the, the gathering of the toys. Um, we do a raffle um, around that night um, that I'll take part of when we do our finale night to nice. you know, to like to kind of set off the toys and things of that nature. Now I've I've judged like you know uh, Providence and Worcester things. Uh, mm -hmm. Never judged a Boston thing, but. Is it the same kind of thing? Where is there a talent portion? Um, oh, that was funny. <laughs> <laughs> there was a, a, a striptease portion. Of that's the talent. That is talent. <laughs> so I guess I would count. <laughs> uh, that's talent. I'll take that. Yes. <laughs> that yes, was, absolutely. That was in. That was interesting. I had never done anything like that either, right. and so I spent a lot of time rehearsing. Rehearse. See, no, start off with no shoes on. That's it. That's my key. Just start off with no shoes on. I just dropped my pants and just left them. I didn't you even left them. You left them. I didn't even bother like fighting with my shoes. It just was going to be a losing That's battle. Awesome. <laughs> All right. So where is the um, Boston Bear contest held? The contest is held at the Alley Bar, which is a bear property with the bear community in Boston. But it, it's open to everybody. But it has yep. a special affinity with the bear community. It's sure. in Pie Alley near Government Center. Pie downtown. Alley Government Center. Mm -hmm. The alley bar. Now, yeah. who do you know who the? Damien is the owner. Damien is the owner. So, Damien, thank you for having such a great establishment with so many terrific events mm -hmm. and hosting, you know, the the mass bear contest, right? Yeah, yeah. Now, um, so how did you get? Uh, did you did you like go to the club and say like, I want to do this next year? Actually, so Sean Mims recruited me to be a part of the organization, and then I found out about the contest and our the current winner, Arthur. He suggested that I actually compete. My partner also suggested that I actually compete. A couple of my friends did. And I just, oh, nice. I never, I was like, no, there's no way. There's no way. I'm not putting myself through this to be and, judged. And, and yet <laughs> you did. And exactly. <laughs> Which is so surprising how we got here. I, like, I did not ever think that I would win, let alone be a part of the contest. So Wonderful. it's been all just been like a really wild experience. Well, you know, your friends were supporting you. You, mm -hmm. you said your partner. Yes. What's his name? Melvin. Melvin? Melvin, thanks for being such a great supporter, he's right? Awesome. Yeah, he's, he's awesome. Amazing. <laughs> um, now, um, how long have you guys been together? Two years. Two years, congratulations. Mm -hmm. That's Long wonderful. distance. Yeah. What's that? Long distance. Long distance. Where's yeah. Melvin live? He lives in Georgia. That's where we met. No, I'm a recent are you from Georgia? Boston. No, but I, was li I lived there until two years ago. I was there for about two years, yeah. Is, is, is he come up here every weekend? I'm yeah, getting no, too we, personal <laughs> now. I know I'm getting too personal. We, I, every couple of months we go see each other, oh, and then we sweet. FaceTime every week. We talk oh. on the phone almost all the time. We text. And, and we've been able to make it work. Like, I mean, you, when no, you've got you that kind of... You sound really sweet. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's one of the best things in my life. Oh, yeah. I love that. I love that. Yeah. I really, really love that. Yeah. Uh, now, you have to, as Mr. Boston Bear, mm -hmm. you have to um, come up with an, an event for 2019, correct? Yes. Yes. Just just one? Um, one signature event. We can take part in, like, but th this would be, like, the biggie. Okay. You know? Like, the there biggie. are smaller events that we do during the month and um, little social things. We have, you know, trivia night. We do a brunch. Wait a minute, you're skipping right over the underwear party. <laughs> I know there's an underwear party, and I want you to mention it. So, Dana. yes, there have been some underwear parties that we've, we've thrown together or we partner with uh, yeah. the Alley and some other establishments or Jocks Cabaret uh, to take part in. So, yeah, we've done that as well. And you, um, you yourself... Um, I have to plan an event. You have an idea for your signature event? Yes, I would like to do a unity picnic slash cookout around Pride Month. Okay, that's and a great then, idea. Yeah, and I would like to bring in, you know, the community has, especially in Boston, has, has a lot of different groups. You've got the different athlete leagues, you've got uh, the Badly Center, the young folks, you've got our, our, our gay elders, you've got uh, just... Gay so elders who really need, I mean, are constantly overlooked and should not be. Mm -hmm. I had a wonderful um, LGBT elders organization on here in one episode. And, you know, thank you for including them in, in the community. Yeah, my, my goal over this next year is to be able to bridge those gaps within the community. I, yeah. I think sometimes, in a little similar way to Boston itself, we tend to segregate ourselves and kind of corner off even within the gay community. And I want to yeah. make sure right. that whatever I can do to kind of widen that tent. I mean, the whole... The whole image is part of why I'm the bear community and why the bear community has a special place in my heart is because we're, you know, we were founded out of acceptance. Um, you know, we were guys that didn't look like like your t stereotypical right. gay guy. We right. were, you know, you know, we didn't have that like, that physique, that build. Yeah. You know, we were hairier, and I found a community within that, and that's kind of what I want to do on a greater scale. Now, speaking of community, yeah. there are going to be a lot of people who are watching this episode, and uh, believe it or not. A lot of um, allies watch this show. Mm -hmm. We have a, a lot of allies who watch this show who learn about the LGBTQ community from this show. I was at a gig last week. I had a mother of a transgender child say, thank you so much for having the show. We watched it together. I was really touched by that. But in keeping with that, 
there are people watching this who don't know what a bear is. They don't know bears, they don't know cubs, they don't know <laughs> otters, they don't know twinks, they don't know... What's a bear? So a bear, think about the actual animal itself. It's a big and hairy. <laughs> and cu super cuddly. And super cuddly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, and, and bears are kind of similar. I'm not, uh, I'm, I'm, you know, I, I could be a little hairier, but like, <laughs> it's kind of like that. You know, you, the, some of them are burly, some of them are more cuddly than others, yep. some are smaller yep. than others. There's yep. all different kinds of sizes, shapes, and colors. But, right. You know, we, we either look that way or have an affinity for folks who, who right. look that way. And, and that's kind of what makes us super awesome. Yeah. Makes us super awesome. <laughs> well, on that note, on that super awesome last comment, that was that was high five. That was that was great. It was a pleasure, just a pleasure. Um, I'm gonna just plug one more time. It's um, go to uh, Boston Bear 2019 on Twitter. Yes, okay. Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. So Boston Bear 2019 Twitter. Yeah. Facebook, Facebook Instagram. and Instagram. Yeah. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank it has been a pleasure. Me. I wish we had more time. It's been excellent. Thanks. All right. Thank you for watching. We'll be back with more. Hey Dale, it's me, Miss Lady Sabrina, and we're back. Um, instead of doing a letter this time, um, I, I've actually gotten a lot of interesting conversations um, because I am recently engaged. Yes, someone decided to buy the whole cow. So, one of the things that I've really heard a lot about is, you know, I've heard a lot about, you know, relationships and the amount of work it takes and you know and and in the in the age where you know everyone is kind of used car shopping you know where it's like if a relationship doesn't fit you one day all of a sudden it's like boop, you know let, let me find something else relationships aren't this hallmark christmas special where you know you come home and everybody's happy and there's a warm meal and you know you 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 have great you know, great conversation every day and you go to the bedroom and have amazing sex and cuddle all night and the next day someone makes you breakfast. I mean, it's it's a lovely thought, okay? And, and I'm not saying that those things don't happen because they do, but I think the big thing is, is like the expectation that they need to happen, you know, every day and that if, you know, if it doesn't happen, there's something wrong in your relationship or that you don't hit rough patches. I mean, everything needs a little rain to grow you know it's like you can't be sunshine every day you know there has to be adversity there has to be things in your relationship that kind of propel and push you to be better people for yourself and for the other person you know and 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 i think the amount of times that i have watched people just kind of walk away from a situation just because they hit a button a bump in the road is 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 crazy you know, I mean, you know what your flaws are, right? You know what your own individual flaws are. So you're expecting someone else to be able to tolerate, love, and appreciate every flaw that you have and every, you know, irrational thought. But then when it comes to the other person, you don't extend the same courtesy of understanding their flaws and their issues and their, their shortcomings and the things that they need you to love them more for. So I think that's the piece that I think we need to work on. You know, if you want a healthy, successful relationship is A, to kind of take a relationship inventory. You know, see if your expectations are kind of right on par or if, or if you're kind of comparing your life to a highlight reel of someone else's life. Because, you know, you, one of the questions that I got all the time were like, oh, you, you know, you seem so happy now and, and, you know, and it's great that you found that person and which is, which is great. And I, and I'm profoundly thankful, but to think that our relationship doesn't have our shortcomings and things that, you know, we as a couple need to work on and understand, um, I think is absurd. We have to get through this, so we have to kind of make an accommodation. We have to make those things, um, you know, compromises. Um, and I think if you're unable to do that, like between yourselves, then again, that doesn't mean the relationship isn't salvageable. It just means that you need more tools than you currently have. So that also means, you know, finding a therapist, you know, uh, getting in, having a third party kind of you know, do that, help you do that inventory, you know, amongst yourselves and then be able to set reasonable expectations uh, for happiness. I hope this finds you well.
I hope you all have a wonderful new year. Love and light. Lady Sabrina. And we are back here on New England Pride TV. I am so happy to introduce you to Sam Donovan. Welcome, Sam, to New England Pride TV. Thank you, Dan. Now, Sam is here to represent um, Project Fearless, which I'm fr pretty familiar with right. uh, because Joe DeMauro yes. uh, is the creator, and he was actually nominated for New England Pride TV's Person of the Year, okay. I think two years ago, if not last year, but um, I got to know him very well. He's just an amazing, amazing individual. And you're here because our poor friend Joe has broken his hand. Broken his hand. D and and I, don't, I don't even know how he did it, but. Um, he decided to pick a fight with a cobblestone street in Ireland. Oh, he fell he in fell. Ireland. He did. I'm sure there's a lot of that happening in Ireland, by the way. Uh, yeah, I don't <laughs> think that he's alone. <laughs> Right. All right. So let's just start a little bit. Uh, let's get some background info on Sam. Yeah. Uh, you are um, f supermodel of the world, a fashionista. Um, RuPaul and I have been duking it out for that <laughs> title for a long time. <laughs> Clothing designer. Yes. And um, now, how did you get interested in, in um, fashion? Um, well, I think that in Massachusetts, there is, we have a very staid sort of dress sense. And so I always wanted things to be prettier. And oh. um, just kind of started embellishing things when I was younger, making clothes out of trees and pillowcases. And I'm very interested in seeing this. Apparently, okay. Parsons was too. Okay. And I got to go to school at Parsons in New York. And through that, it's just been a crazy whirlpool of excitement and opportunity. That must have been such an exciting time for you. I'm just, just trying I to remember very little of it. but Really? Yeah. Well, New York. Okay. <laughs> All right. So you were out until four in the morning and then going to class? Uh, right. But I was out working <laughs> on my garments. Garments. Having okay. little panic attacks. Yeah. Oh, little mini panic attacks. Mini panic attacks. Right. Yeah. Um, now, fashion for you is a, hopefully your full-time job and, mm -hmm. and something you're working toward. Right. And um, who are some of your clients and, and uh, where are you working out of, things like that? Um, so over the, actually over the past couple of years, I've really refocused my sort of branding and clientele to drag queens. Which, Love it. Right. I mean, it, who it, doesn't want to work with all that glamour? It, and all of those sequins all that those I will sequins. never get out of my rug. Oh, ever. OK. Are those, um, hand, are those hand stitched? Are oh, they glued? Are they? No. Oh, okay. Thank God. I should say yes, because then no. I could probably get the markup, but no, they are not. Um, no, but I, I've worked with uh, a lot of New York queens, Pixie Aventura, Monet Exchange, who was just on RuPaul's Drag Race and will be on All Stars very shortly. Oh, exciting. Um, Shaquita Hall, just really like legendary New York queens. But since I moved back to Boston, um, I've gotten to work with a lot of amazing Providence area queens and Boston area queens. Uh, Freya Knox is someone that I work with quite frequently, um, who is also connected to Project Fearless, and I guess we'll talk about that yes, soon. Yes, because um, Project Fearless has ambassadors, correct? Yes. All right. Now, let's, let's jump into um, Project Fearless. Uh, first of all, what is Project Fearless? For, I know what it is, but for our viewers at home, right. uh, who might just be getting introduced to Project Fearless right now, kind of give us a little overview of what it is. Right. Um, so Project Fearless is a nonprofit that works with the LGBT community and helps uh, to destigmatize the idea and issue of mental health. Um, now, Joe has done a wonderful job bringing that to the forefront with with incredible. Project Fearless, um, because there is such and you know it's it's less. I'll I'm going to say it's less. Um, but when I was dealing with my major anxiety and panic attacks that kept me, stopped me from living the life I wanted to live or needed to live, um, for those, uh, you're, you're new to me, but our viewers at home know that, uh, I'm, I've been a singer songwriter since 12 years old, whatever. Um, but for 25 years of my life, for 25 years of my life, I could not go on a stage, I could not go near a stage, I couldn't speak, speak in public, which was tough because that was my dream, was to be, right. I wanted to be what I have reached today, which is uh, I'm performing all over the, uh, New England with my band and I, ha and I have this wonderful show and a radio show. 
And that's only been for the past nine years. Right. Because for 25 years, I couldn't do it. I was being stopped from doing it. And I was embarrassed. Yeah. And I was embarrassed that I felt so weak and helpless. And that was in my own head. Right. Um, so a company like Project, an organization like Project Fearless, really stresses to people who deal with um, any kind of really kind of uh, mental disorder that yeah. it's, it's okay and it's okay to work through it and it takes as much time as it takes. Mm -hmm. uh, it doesn't happen overnight, it doesn't happen, it could happen, and it could take years. Right. Um, but I found a great therapist and that's what you're helping people to find, correct, in Project Fearless? Oh yeah, definitely. Um, I mean, Project Fearless's main um, goal right now is helping connect uh, LGBTQ people to vetted therapists through an organization called zencare.co, mm -hmm. not mm -hmm. zencare.com, zencare.co. Um, and the reason that we chose that is because it's super easy. It oftentimes takes less than 10 minutes to find, to find a, th a great therapist in your area. In your area. Yeah. And these are, when you say they're vetted, I mean, they're, they're, they're probably, that probably means they're, they're um, top of their game. Yeah, correct? yeah. exactly. Um, now, I, I think it's really important for, uh, was it Zen? Zen.co. Zen Zen.co. Zencare.co. I'm so sorry. Zencare.co. Because when I was looking for a therapist uh, and looking for help, I knew I needed help, I actually went through um, three or four therapists. Wow. And two of the therapists that I started with, and um, yeah, that's right, I got them fired. Oh. They were highly, highly inappropriate. Wow, okay. And it's a company like like you're dealing with this company who are bringing you top notch and that's so important right. because there are so many people out there who should not be in this field. No. And, um, and I unfortunately had to deal with two of them, um, but they're no longer in the field. I'm so sorry to hear oh, that. No, I, wish, yeah. I wish that Project Fearless had been around I know, to I, help I, I you wish. out with that back this then. Was, this was probably uh, 12 years ago or so, yeah, right. before you were born. Exactly, <laughs> and like way before Joe was born. Jo way before Joe was born. <laughs> um, now, Project Fearless also has um, fundraisers and um, things like that. Yes. Now, now you, I think it just, ha it, either it just happened um, or uh, very close, to, there was like a, Ad, an, an Adam and Eve kind of thing? Yes, so okay. we yeah. had, um, very recently we had the Project Fearless Gala, and I mean, Naturally, the primary sort of reason for having it is to fundraise, but we also have like a ton of fun. A ton of fun, um, yeah. We, the theme the th of, What was the theme? It was Adam and Eve, or the Garden of Eden, rather. So lots of snakes bouncing around. Snakes, apples, <laughs> all sorts of things. I know, the euphemisms just go crazy, don't they? Endless. <laughs> <laughs> um, but we had this wonderful costume contest that I got to help judge. Um, with the rest of the Project Fearless, or not the Project Fearless ambassadors, but they were part of it. Um, and some of the looks that they served were just absolutely stunning. Oh, um, that's exciting. The Freya in particular, mm -hmm. um, one of the Project Runway, or Project Fearless ambassadors, uh, wore this like beautiful, like, garden, oh. just giant Marie you know, Antoinette looking ball gown. We're going to find that somewhere on Facebook and put that right here, right, right. here in right. this interview. <laughs> um, did you make your own costume for that event? Did you? I did. I ripped off Violet Tchotchke's uh, reveal <laughs> look when she goes from like the black to the plaid jumpsuit thing. You know what? Thing. I know exactly what you're talking about because Don't that was all? pretty epic. Yeah, It was epic. Yeah. And I mean, it was funny because there were so many people there that were just allies and they were supporting yeah. the community that hadn't necessarily been um, super connected right. to it. And RuPaul's Drag Race is, as much as I think sort of mainstream gay culture yeah. accepts it and is really familiar with it, yeah. allies not necessarily. So they got to sort of see it for the first time and they thought it was my design and I was like, oh, oh no, like <laughs> gave credit where credit yeah. was due. Oh too. good, you have to do that. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, we've come to the end of our time here for our interview, but what I'm gonna ask you to do one more time is, um, um, the website or Facebook page for Project right. Fearless and then um, the uh, Finding the Vetted Therapist. Right, so again, Project Fearless, you can find us on Facebook, you can find us on Instagram, I believe it's Project Fearless RI, and we're working 
through zencare.co to connect uh, specifically LGBTQ people to uh, vetted therapists to help them with their mental health. Issues. Absolutely wonderful. And I wish you luck in your um, fashion career. Oh, it's very so exciting. Much. I'm very, very excited. Exciting. Thank you. All right, uh, we're going to be right back with more New England Pride TV right after this. Hey, it's me, Amy T, with another segment of Experimental Comedy Therapy. First of all, I want to wish everyone watching New England Pride Television a happy new year. Now for me, I've never been one to make resolutions. What I like to do is set goals and intentions for myself for the upcoming year. And by doing so, I make a vision board. And as a recovery coach and peer specialist for a dual diagnosis treatment program, I also use it as a tool for my clients so that they can, it's like a hands-on involvement as well as producing positive and tangible results. Now, I started making vision boards probably about 10 years ago and I'm proof that it works. I put a picture of a DVD cover called Lapping Matters and six months later I got the phone call to do Lapping Matters Next Gen and I couldn't be more, I couldn't have been more excited so I'm proof that it works and over the past years I've always put a picture of a Porsche on my vision board and some of you may know I've owned three and it's been a positive result for me and for throughout my recovery from mental health and my sobriety. So the focus of my vision board on 2019 is going to be on wellness. I made a lot of personal changes to myself last year. I left the family business after 30 years so that I could focus on my comedy career and speaking career and a mental health advocate. And wellness is gonna keep me grounded so that, to be honest with you, so I can just walk the talk. I have two funny, fun and fearless. Those are the things that are gonna go along with continuing my one woman show, I'm crazy, not stupid, comedy with no nuts. I'm looking forward to touring with that. I've already booked a few dates for the new year, so that is something I'm extremely excited about. I also have a picture of Los Angeles. It's one of the places that fills my heart and I hope to get back there this year. When I'm hiking Runyon Canyon, the sun, the palm trees, everything is right in my world and in my soul. So what I want, I can tell you that vision boards have worked for me in the past and I think that they can work for you in the future. Grab some magazines, set some goals, set some intentions, and watch your dreams and become reality for you. Until next time, this is Amy T with ECT. Don't forget, be responsible for the energy you bring into this world and practice compassion and tolerance. Thank you. We've come to the end of another episode of New England Pride TV. I just really want to thank everybody who watches this on your local cable stations or on YouTube or on Facebook. Just thank you for supporting us. Um, it's, it's so important to me to have you uh, understand what we're trying to do here, which is education, yeah. because education is key with everything. And um, I really have to say a huge thank you to our sponsors because yes. without our sponsors, we would not be able to bring you the inspiring uh, people that we do. So I'd like to end the show the way we always do yes. by saying, please don't be afraid to shine your light. Because you might be lighting the way for someone in need. Until next time, thank you for watching New England Pride TV. Thank you. You got New England pride, show us. You've got New England pride. Stand up, shout out, show us. You got New England pride, show us. You've got New England pride. Mm -hmm. New England.